Today we are gonna take a quick tour of my chemical shelf, what to use, when and why. Those are the questions I'll try to answer. I do have quite a few chemicals, but to keep things uh, simple and compact, uh, today we'll focus only to solvents and uh, glues. So let's get started with solvents. As the name implies, uh, the purpose of solvents uh, is to solve chemical substances, but not all solvents dissolve all substances, so you need a specific solvent for each use case. So let's begin with the, the isopropyl alcohol and uh, the ethyl, ethyl alcohol. And uh, isopropyl is better for cleaning electronics because it doesn't attack most plastics uh, and doesn't leave residues. Ethyl alcohol is easier to find and uh, relatively cheap. You want the highest grade, 96% or more, for it to be effective. These alcohols can be used to remove light oils and are generally friendly with many plastics, including polymethyl metacrylate, aka plexiglass, and polycarbonate, aka lexan, provided they don't have any existing fractures, otherwise the alcohol can seep in, expand and worsen the crack. Alcohol is also very useful as a coolant when drilling aluminum, never use oil for that. And uh, it acts as a solvent for some paints, uh, dry glues and uh, dyes. For example, aniline dyes and shellac should be dissolved in 99% ethyl alcohol. Finally, it can also be used uh, as a mild solvent uh, to clean up uncured epoxy resin stains. Now let's move on to more aggressive solvents. Uh, this is light like petroleum and um, it is lighter than uh, kerosene, but uh, heavier than uh, mineral spirit or white spirit like this one. It is a strong solvent uh, for hydrocarbon based uh, compounds uh, like uh, carbonized gunk uh, on the spark plugs. And when you are dealing with uh, metal parts covered with heavy oil or wax or grease that is maybe uh, solidified uh, and is very hard to remove, uh, this stuff is the ultimate solution and uh, it removes very well everything and clean up very well every, everything. However, it does leave a, a oily residue, so you need to follow up with a lighter solvent to finish the cleanup. And uh, why you should wear gloves uh, with any solvents, uh, maybe uh, <laughs> with exception of water. With uh, this stuff, you really want to wear gloves because it is really slow to evaporate and uh, it, it can creep inside your skin uh, over time and it is, that is not good. Then we have uh, mineral spirit or white spirit, it's the same thing. It uh, is another solvent used for cleaning greasy parts, but it's mainly intended for thinning oil-based paint and cleaning them up afterwards. But like, like petroleum, it leaves a bit of an oily residue. So if you use this to degrease something, then you need to use another solvent to remove the oily parts. On the scale from the most oily to the driest solvent, we have this one, turpentine. The turpentine is a natural solvent extracted from the resin of pine trees and other conifers. It's especially useful for thinning linseed oil based paints and cooked linseed oil. Never use white spirit with that kind of paints with, or with linseed oil because you will ruin your work. The nitro thinner is uh, the a coach oil solvent used in a wide range of applications. Keep in mind that uh, nitro thinner isn't a single chemical, it's actually a blend of solvents. If you check the label, you often find ingredients like xylene, toluene, and others. It can be used for cleaning and degreasing, thinning, thinning nitrocellulose-based paints, softening 
neoprene glues and uh, even working with silicone cork not just for removing it but uh, also for diluting it uh, and making it smoother for special applications uh, that only DIY wires may conceive <laughs> It does leave a slight oily residue, but in most cases it's negligible, so it could be a final cleanup if uh, you neglect uh, that uh, small oily part that remains. And finally we have the driest solvent, uh, we have acetone, the ultimate degreaser. Uh, as a general purpose solvent is not as broadly effective as nitro thinner or like petroleum but it's particularly good for breaking down glue residues and certain waxes it's very effective uh, at dissolving uncured or even slightly cured epoxy and the polyester resin it also dissolves uh, stains uh, of uh, dried cyanoacrylate acrylate glue aka super glue and uh, it doesn't leave any residue so it's perfect for cleaning off uh, any leftover for, from other solvents just be cautious with the PCBs and the electronic components and be aware that acetone is aggressive toward both polymethacrylate PMMA and the polycarbonate then we have uh, WD-40 this is good catch-all cleaner and lubricant however it leaves a thin residue and it is not recommended for electronics but uh, on mechanical parts uh, also because it tends to evaporate completely in few months uh, it should not be considered a definitive lubricant excellent to help loosening gallet or stuck bolts and that is based on my experience personal experience and my opinion of course and finally we have water yes water is an excellent uh, solvent uh, you can even wash electronic circuits uh, as long as you use demineralized water and dry the board quickly afterwards just avoid potentiometers and other mechanical parts uh, that are hard to dry now let's talk about the glues and let's begin with silicone cork silicone cork is not really a glue but more a sealant uh, but it is used in so many DIY projects that is worth mentioning here. There are two flavors, uh, typically acidic, uh, like this one, and uh, um, neutral silicone coke, like this one. <clears throat> and the acidic version is not indicated with iron or steel, because it could uh, cause rust. rust. Uh, then we have polyurethane glue, has a great adhesion on wood and uh, even on some porous metals like anodized aluminum it expands and reacts with the moisture in the air and inside of the wood its main drawback is that it, it expands and, uh, and and often creates a mess <laughs> and uh, it is important to seal very well the cap then we have cyanoacrylate glue aka super glue and uh, it bonds by reacting with the moisture in the air or on the surface of the parts that join and it needs a really small amount of moisture so you can even glue two pieces of steel together next uh, we have uh, the PVA, PVA glues and uh, are usually white or some formulations are transparent like this one and uh, typically typically are for general purpose uh, their best use case uh, is uh, with uh, porous material like uh, paper or fabrics and then we have new prim based glues and are general purpose relatively strong adhesives they work on a variety of materials uh, including porous ones these are contact glues, which means uh, you have to wait a bit uh, for the solvent to partially evaporate before pressing the parts together and uh, then apply a strong force. However, they are not great when the leather forces are coming to play because they tend to slip. And then we have the epoxy resin. 
This reactor with the, when mixed with a second component, here we have the two components uh, conveniently stored in these coupled syringes. And uh, so usually you have a limited working time before the glue sets and becomes unworkable. There are many brands and formulations based on epoxy resin. A common type like this one is transparent and has, has good adhesion and is uh, pretty strong. But uh, there are other versions, uh, often sold as two-colored two -color pastes, that are even stronger and uh, can be used uh, as filler too. And finally, a word uh, on polyester resin. Like epoxy, it creates uh, strong bonds uh, and uh, must be mixed with a hardener, this little bottle here, and uh, usually in very tiny amount. As you can see, this tiny bottle is more than enough for this uh, can. It has a very strong smell that can linger for days, so it is a problem when used indoor. Originally designed for bonding uh, glass fibers like this one, uh, polyester resin is also effective for joining metals. However, the final bond tends to be relatively more fragile compared to the good quality pure epoxy resin. And that was a quick tour with the chemicals that I mostly use in my DIY products. And uh, whether you are cleaning, repairing, building uh, or doing other stuff, uh, knowing what solvent and uh, what glues to use uh, can make the difference. So if you have any questions uh, or have other experiences uh, with other products, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you find it interesting this video, if so, hit the thumbs up icon. And uh, for now, that's all folks, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye! And here we have uh, a couple of, of examples of shellac flakes uh, that has been solved uh, with alcohol, 99% uh, alcohol. And this was once used as an insulating and dielectric agent in early electronic components. Nowadays, modern materials have superior performance, but, but for DIY or experiment, it could be still used today. Its main advantages are that it is non-toxic and biodegradable.